Welcome to XDI Tutorials. Today we will learn how to key out chroma by using key light. For doing that, we will study different key light parameters and then we will see how to composite the chroma output. First of all, we will import the footage. For that, go to image menu and select the read node. The shortcut key for read node is R. Select the footage. Keep the sequences option active to import the whole sequence. So, this is our main plate green screen. Now, connect the footage to the viewer. Go to draw menu and select read node. This is the background JPEG of single frame. It is having a resolution of 3872 by 2592. And the footage is having the resolution of 1280 by 1080 pixels. Before starting, we will set our comp resolution because the resolution of footage and the image are different. Go to edit menu and select project settings. Change the full size format to 1280 by 1080 pixels that is the footage size. We will keep the frame rate to 24 and keep the frame range from 0 to 50. Close the project settings. From here we will change the maximum panels to 1 so that only a single property is visible of selected node. After that, for keying, we need alpha in this footage because it is having only RGB channel and it does not have alpha channel. So click on the read node and select auto alpha to generate the alpha channel. Also click on auto alpha for background. Here you can see that a solid alpha has been generated on both the nodes. After that, take key light node. Go to keyer menu and select key light. Connect the key light source to the footage and connect the viewer to the key light. In the properties panel of key light, here the final result is active. This is the view menu of the key light node. In this menu, you can select what to render in the viewer. Like here, there is inside mask. It will render the inside mask which is connected to the key light node. And the outside mask will render both the mask individually. First, we will pick the BG color. Disable the key light node so that it does not affect the viewer as soon as we make the selection. Pick the BG color by using color picker. By pressing control, we can get the color of particular pixel and by pressing control plus shift, we can select the particular color range. While picking color, always check the green screen lighting. Here we want to only key out this part so we can neglect the outside region. Now enable the key light node by pressing D it can be seen that the green screen is removed. Disable the bounding box. Click the color picker and then press control in the viewer so that it will disable the bounding box. Now check the footage in alpha channel. Here in the output there are still some grains so we will remove them and make a solid mat. For this we will study the key light parameters. Float this window so that we can view the properties in the full screen. Expand the properties window. So, in the properties panel, this is screen gain. It controls how much of the screen color is removed to make the screen mat. Increasing the screen gain removes the grains in the background and makes it black. It helps to adjust the luminance of the image in the key light. This is screen balance option. In the footage, we have some dark areas and some bright areas. It tries to average the brightness and darkness in the footage and balances the screen. In this hand part, we can see that the key values are also changing. Here. Next is screen pre blur. It softens the foreground image used to generate the key. It applies the blur on RGB and alpha channels. Here in the output you can see that the edges are becoming soft. We can use screen pre blur to some extent like here we will keep it to 0.3 to blur the mat. Now we will see screen mat options. Open the screen mat. Click this arrow. Here there is clip black and clip white option. This enhances both the blacks and whites individually in the alpha mode. By adjusting the clip black, we can see that the blacks value increase. But we should adjust it in a very low amounts because it removes many details in the footage. Now we will adjust the clip white values. Here we can see that the transparent part in the footage are getting affected by the clip white option. But while doing so, adjust it till a particular level or else the edges will look hard. Next is clip rollback. It is used to restore the edge detail. 
its value is the number of pixels of the edge that are rolled back to the original screen map. Keep the values to 0.7 for some edge softness. This is screen dialet option. It shrinks or extends the mat. We can see that increasing this value extends the mat. Taking it to a negative shrinks the mat. Screen softness. This option is used to increase the softness in the mat. Here we will keep it to 0.7. After that, there is screen despot black. Let us see here in the mat. Zoom in a bit. There are still some black spot remaining in this white area. This will remove the black spots by increasing its value. Here you can see that it is affecting this part of the mat. So, we use two options for removing black. That is clip black and despot black. Next is screen despot white. It removes the spots of white from the black background. Now we will see how it works. Pan it around. And here you can see that there are some grains still visible in alpha mode. So we can remove this by using screen despot white. Here you can see that the white spots are getting blurred. And gradually they are not visible. In this way, you can use the screen despot white option to remove the remaining grains. Adjust the clip black value a bit. So now we can see that the alpha is looking solid in black and white color. Change the screen despot white to zero. Because we don't need to remove the grains from this area as it is going to be removed in the garbage mat. And we will see now how to composite this alpha with the background. First we will bring this mat output to our mainstream flow. For that go to channel menu and then select copy node. The copy node facilitates for swapping the channels. You can swap the A channel to the B channel in this node. Because here in this footage we are having 4 channels that is R, G, B and Alpha. And from here we have generated a mat using key light. And now we will call this mat in A input of the copy node. Connect the A input to the key light. So the R, G, B and Alpha are coming from here. And the only Alpha of the key light is getting shuffled. That is shifted from A input to the B input. And then it is being merged. That means we are replacing the alpha of B input with the A input. Now if we check in all the channels that is R, G, B and alpha in the viewer. Then we can see that we have changed the alpha of the original footage. But still our output is as it is and unaffected. And now we want to discard the green from this footage. For that we have to go to merge menu and then select the pre-multiply node. What it will do is pre-multiply R, G, B with alpha. And show the final output in the viewer. So connect this node in between viewer and copy node. Because the copy node has copied the alpha. And the pre-multiply node will multiply the alpha with RGB. And now here it is showing the final output in the viewer. The alpha which was there in the copy node was multiplied. It means we have retained the white pixels and removed the black pixels from the footage. After that to remove these garbage pixels. Press tab and select in node. Again take a roto node, press O to get the roto node or else you can select it from the draw menu. Draw the garbage mask. Use the bezier tool and draw it. Here the perfect shape is not required. You can draw it anyhow because this is a garbage mat. Connect the A input of the copy node to in node. Connect the A input of the in node to key light and B input to the roto shape. Because the A input is multiplied by the alpha of B. And we can see that. Here the garbage or the unwanted part of this footage has been removed. Now we have this background image. It is having the resolution more than 3K. And we want to composite it with the footage which is having less resolution. So we will need to bring down the image resolution to the resolution of the footage. To bring down the resolution we will take the reformat node. Press tab and type reformat. Press enter to get the node. This node can be found inside the transform menu. The reformat node changes the resolution of actual image to the desired resolution. And press 1 to view the reformat node. 
it can be seen that there are some duplicate pixels in this part and also it can be seen here in the upper part of the footage but as the color is pure white so they are not visible it is happening because we have selected the resize type to width so it is adjusting it in width and filling up the height of the image for remaining pixels to solve this you can use the black outside option just activate it from here and it will crop the pixels outside the image boundary and if we select the resize type to height then first it will match the height of the footage and then it will fit the width of the image and the fit option will fit the image in the same aspect ratio the fill option will fill the whole comp resolution and here there is distort option it will fit the whole composition by distorting its ratio and changes the original aspect ratio after doing reformat now we have our bg and fg we will merge them together bring this viewer down press m to bring the merge node and now we will connect the foreground of the merge node to the footage and background to the image after that press 1 to view the merge node change the viewer to full screen by pressing space bar zoom in a bit so here we can see that we have discarded the green and created a transparency in the next tutorial we will see how to give treatment to this edge and remove the spill so thank you guys for watching this tutorial hope you have liked it